Here we go. I think there are some um, background noise going on. So we'll just um, ask everybody to please mute your mics and let's jump right into it. I would like to first introduce myself and also give a big, big shout out to my co-author, co-presenter, frequent collaborator, and that's Dr. Maria Duff, who is not here with us, but she's always with me in spirit. And those of you that I have never had a chance to work with yet, I was born and raised in Hungary. That's where the accent comes from, in case you're wondering. And here are a couple of images when the time is right and we can travel again. I hope that one day you could visit that part of the world. And I also wanted to tell you a little bit about my co-teaching journey, which also began in Hungary. In the final year of my teacher education program, I was invited to go into the classroom at the side of a student teacher, a colleague, a friend, a classmate, and that was Maria Olda. This is a different Maria, not Maria Dove under a different name. That's my university and that's my high school where I was a student teacher. Then fast forward many years later, I became a New York City public school teacher and the only job available that I grabbed up was at the elementary level. So I became a New York City teacher and I did date myself. I added the date there for you to know that this was at a time when there were no books, no resources, not much published on co-teaching for the sake of English learners. Special education inclusion was taking off and I had a visionary principal Carol um, Wertheimer, who asked us who wants to come out of the basement. And that's how I ended up in that beautiful, bright, sunny, yellow, second grade classroom on the second floor. And again, fast forward many years, as uh, Kelly mentioned, I am the Associate Dean and Director of the EDD program at Monroy College, focusing on social justice and equity. And the reason why I'm also talking about this program for a minute is because we co-teach. We co-teach several classes, several courses. One that I happen to co-teach is on change leadership for equity, advocacy, and excellence with Dr. Mark James. And the purpose here is, of course, not around the needs of English learners, but around the needs of providing multiple perspectives and allowing our doctoral students to really form a community in which there is shared ownership of these very difficult topics. By the way, Molloy created a YouTube a video clip about us in case you want to know how we co-teach. So as Kelly also mentioned, I have published quite in intensively since 2010 when our first book came out. That's what we call affectionately the Brown Book. And the rest is history. We never ever anticipated, we meaning Maria Dove and I, that uh, co-teaching, first of all, would be such a national, international phenomenon as it is today. We wanted to document our practice as well as share with interested educators an alternative to the pull-out system that was uh, in our view and based on the research that was emerging was not as effective as anticipated. So now uh, let's jump into the workshop and I'm going to be doing a lot of these chat participations so that you are actively engaged and I'm modeling online teaching as well. My warm-up question is what's your C? Jot down as many words as you can think of, starting, there's a little typo there, starting with the letter C that supports collaboration and co-teaching. So think about anything that starts with C and would be a good match here for us. Communication, compromise, cooperation, conversations, beautiful, care, community, keep them coming. Creativity, we definitely need that. Some of the words are coming back the same as before. Yes, we have to chat and we have to build a relationship with our colleagues. Coaching is a big part of it. Beautiful. Consistency. Love that. That's one answer to solving some of our problems. And coffee can't hurt. Thank you, Martin, for being, making it real, keeping us grounded here. Compassion, compassion, multiple times. Culture, a very important um, aspect of recognizing the cultural perspectives that we're bringing and calmness, thank you for that. I'm looking for new words. Kelly, any, do you see anything new that hasn't been mentioned yet? Challenge, absolutely. It is a challenging experience for many. Cohabitating, yes, you are in this shared real estate context in which you're sharing a lot, building connections, complementing each other. Yes, that's one of my favorite recommendations. 
And yes, we're talking about content cur curriculum planning, something very, very uh, practical, chocolate, and so forth. Oh my goodness. I Wonderful. think crossing over, which I like, and confidence. <laughs> You do need confidence. a lot of confidence as we're exploring this territory. Yes, I think you have just given us so many wonderful words and concepts to play with. So let's continue. Here are my objectives. These were in the blurb. When you signed up, I think you saw that even though previously, maybe some of you have already seen me present, I focus on collaboration co-teaching within the context of a classroom. Now everything moved online or in a remote learning context. How are we going to continue doing all of this? And thank you, Elizabeth, jumping in with three. So you really took it seriously and you um, typed in multiple C words there. Creativity, compassion, consideration, absolutely. So here is my very, very ambitious agenda which includes not only a lot of chat box participation, but 14 breakout rooms, because there is about 140 of you. So that, that should work. There will be about 10 people in each room. And you're going to have a little bit of an online discussion in your breakout rooms. And I designed a Padlet that will match that breakout room session. And uh, that is not exactly uh, correct. It's our burn, uh, but the link, should be correct. I we will type it in here, Kelly. The uh, if you don't mind typing in and double checking that Arburn spelled correctly, Arburn one is okay. the actual link. Could you check that? I one? I have the link and I tried it. So whenever you want the link to go into the chat, just let me know. The the okay. link that I have was correct. Okay, so then we're gonna re-enter that into the. So chat you'd like box. me to put that in there now? Yes, and I think it is the correct spelling. So, and then yes, we're gonna come is. back. Yes, the correct spelling. We are going to use that as a virtual workspace. So I really wanted to model a lot of different um, virtual learning uh, opportunities for you. And then we'll come back to the Zoom for some continued explorations and questions and answers. We'll wrap up at around 2.55, if anything that Kelly, you need to say at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is what it's going to look like when you are there on Arburn. And yes, it is correctly spelled here. So it's padmet.com slash ahonixfiles slash Arburn1. I will be doing a whole range of workshops, uh, virtual workshops. And for every one of them, I'm going to be experimenting with this setup, which is um, a main presentation for about 30, 35 minutes. Then you're going to go into your breakout rooms automatically assigned. So you're going to have a chance to talk to each other virtually. So you'll turn on your mics, you'll turn on your videos. And these are the structured questions that based on which breakout room you're going to be assigned to, you will see once you click on it, you will be right there to discuss the topic that I shared with you. There are many additional resources that I know you're not going to be able to explore in 15 minutes. So I also believe that Padlet is a tool and a platform that allows continued uh, collaboration and sharing lots of lots of resources. Okay, so as you um, jump into this topic with me, I just like to remind you that the core of my work with Maria is uh, captured in this second edition of our Collaborating for English Learners book, which is a very simple but very complex system, which is to design a collaborative integrated service delivery for English learners. We need to think in terms of instructional and non-instructional collaborative practices. And those instructional collaborative practices can be grouped into these seven categories, joint planning, curriculum mapping, and alignment. I'm gonna ask you as I review them to start typing in which of these do you think right now under the COVID conditions you've done the most of. So just type in if COVID allowed you, invited you, or just simply you found yourself an opportunity to do the most of which of these seven. You could just type in the number or you could type in the actual um, instructional practice. So joint planning, curriculum mapping and alignment, focusing on parallel teaching. If you are not together physically, uh, co-developing instructional materials, collaboratively assessing your student work, co-teaching in a virtual way, either synchronous or asynchronous formats, or joint professional learning. So Kelly, what are you seeing in the chat box emerging as a pattern? Some of I am you seeing some very, very 
busy people. I'm seeing some people who are touching on almost all of them, a lot of five and seven, three, three, five, seven, five, seven, five, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah. we've, we've got a lot of combinations here, a lot of feedback for the, the um, type of collaboration that's been going on. Yes, yes. And you know, this whole June series, the webinar series that uh, Arburn put out is a part of joint professional learning. So I'm sure that we have both um, ENL teachers and classroom teachers in the room. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. So let's go through these seven. That's my goal for the major part of the webinar. And then you're going to break up into smaller groups and you'll have an opportunity to discuss one or more of these. So joint planning continues to be a really, really core practice. And we really can't just think about that once in a while we'll do it or on the fly. Uh, right before logging on, we'll figure out what we're doing, or you plan and I follow. But under, uh, of course, when we are in, a, in crisis mode, all of those things have been happening, and they are perfectly normal. But what we want to do as we move forward, especially if there is going to be some kind of hybrid or online reopening in September, we need to make sure that we are um, integrating collaborative planning into the school day, into the virtual school day as well, if that's where we're going next year. It has to be systemic and sustained because it's so difficult to figure this all out on your own, especially with the many, many inequities that were um, shed light on during these difficult times. And of course, uh, you can do joint planning in various contexts with your team uh, teams, with your grade level teams, with individuals as you are partnering with your co-teachers. And uh, even before we had to use technology, now we don't have a choice. So technology is our main mode of com communication. So here are a couple of really powerful examples that I'd like to share with you. This comes to us from Tan Huyn from Vietnam, who has a really powerful um, very, very uh, informative blog. It's empowerells.com. Kelly, if you wanted to type that in, we're kind of like co-teaching on the fly here with Kelly as my co-facilitator. So Tan is also very active on Twitter. And they started about three months before us in the Asian region. I was in China, by the way, in January. Some of you might know that and um, was really, really um, an amazing experience as well as a very scary re-entry to the United States when I learned what was happening in China. When I was there, nobody knew what was happening. None of the teachers or administrators I worked with knew what was going on. So anyway, so he says there are five critical structures to establishing a virtual learning environment. And as you could see, a lot of these are aligned to joint planning, creating a week at a glance type of planning document with lots of hyperlinks or so go to place setting up virtual meetings, both among teachers, between teachers and with the students as well, trying to record lessons, trying to cut down on a lot of the live um, way of planning, but pre-planning by pre-recording very short, two, three, four, five minute video clips, maybe using Flipgrid and many other tools. Sending home, this was very much the reality around the world and in Long Island as well. Sometimes you have to send home packets or physical uh, work if online learning is not available. And finally, collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. So I'm very happy to report to you that this unit planning template that Maria and I designed way, way back was very successfully translated and adapted to the remote learning by your very own Kelly Cordero and Erica Flores. And it was so wonderful to see how you can just take anything and everything that you've done before remote learning and see how can you, how do you have to adapt that to the current um, system? So here is one where the digital platform and Google Classroom will be utilized. But many of the same things we did before, content and language objective, or going through sort of a teacher modeling, gradual release of responsibility, or adding scaffolds to our teaching, many of the same things still hold up. We have, of course, a lot more digital support and maybe even, even more social emotional support. Here's another example from my own school district. I live in North Belmore, where uh, a, teacher, a group of teachers designed a seesaw structured teacher example together. And then each teacher gave his or her own voiceover. So when this planning template was taken from classroom to classroom, 
each of the teachers uh, voiced over the explanation on Seesaw for the kids so the children hear their own teachers' voices. So, so joint planning can take so many new creative ways, as you said, and really heavily dependent on collaboration. Let's move on to curriculum. When you think about integrated ENL and standalone ENL, our structure has not changed under remote learning. So we have to continue to think about what are our curricular goals? How do we plan and design a viable curriculum? This is especially for next fall. We, we did not have time this time to figure this all out, but moving forward, it's a critical part of launching the new school year with, um, with a more solid, overview of what are we supposed to be teaching and how are we going to do that. So I really invite you, especially if there are administrators in the Zoom room, to think about how to set up some summer curriculum writing, which would allow the integrated ENL and the standalone ENL programs to have very clear curricular goals and curriculum maps. A sam sample curriculum map is here. So in the chat room, if you could type in, if you do have, if you have developed any curriculum maps for remote learning, has your district just yes or no? How did you structure it? Just a couple of comments on how did you address this issue of clarity about curriculum? And I'm not surprised, and please don't think that this is in any kind of uh, a shame or blame type of a question, but I hope you agree with me, and now you could start typing yes if you agree with me, that without clarity on what we're going to be teaching, what is that bird's eye view of, what is the scope and sequence, what are going to be the learning targets, objectives, goals, learning intentions, whatever language you're gonna be using, it's really critical. So moving into uh, remote learning, if we have to, or into some kind of hybrid, which is looking more and more um, likely, I really encourage you, invite you, into this kind of thinking, which is working, over, working on this over the summer. Now, here's one example from India. As, you mentioned, as I might have mentioned to you, I'm, I'm forgetting now that I was on sabbatical this spring semester, and I did a lot of research, formal and informal, about collaboration and co-teaching around the United States and internationally. And here is one. Um, the, the date is April 7, not July 4, in case you're, that's the, the British way of indicating the date. So a week at a glance, um, remote learning plan for a particular a grade level and content area is really, really helpful. So this is just one example. All right, so let's move on to the next one, which is parallel teaching. I think, Kelly, you designed these diagrams for me way back when. I think you Yes, a long time ago. Yes. A long time ago. <laughs> so in a parallel teaching context, what we see, I'm taking you back to Vietnam for a moment, Tan and Sarah break up their classes into book clubs and each teacher uh, works with a particular group of students. So just the same way that you would do it in a physical setting, how to translate that kind of interaction and opportunity to divide and conquer when you are online. Here's another one from British Columbia, from Canada, where Michelle Gill and her colleagues are creating or using Book Creator online with different groups of students who are unable to attend. So this is an interesting setup I wanted to explain to you. What's happening is they re-entered school, but some children, for whatever health reasons or parents did not feel comfortable, they kept the children at home. So they had this kind of uh, hybrid teaching that while there were kids in the physical building and they got one kind of learning experience, some kids got the same learning experience um, while they were at home. And this is one way of creating a digital, virtual parallel teaching setup. Fascinating. So I always look to what can we borrow from what's happening internationally. And tomorrow I'm going to have a workshop, uh, a webinar just on that if you want to come back. So let's look at some examples of co-developing lesson ideas and instructional materials. If you could please again type in what have you done? How have you collaborated on instructional materials with your colleagues? Did you have any opportunity to engage in this form of collaboration, which is co-developing lesson ideas, instructional mater materials, even, even if you ended up not co-teaching, but that you developed on 
um, you co-developed, you worked on something together with your colleagues. And what? What was it? Was it a scaffold? Was it recording something? Choice boards. Thank you so much. And Bri Brianna says it's constant collaboration. You're constantly working on Google Meets, pre-recording lessons, at puzzles, Nearpod. Wonderful. Now a lot of ad uh, additional ideas are coming in. You're mm -hmm. typing in. So um, beautiful. So based on your school district or your building even, um, the type of technology that you were using, of course, varies. Screencastify, I love that. So anything that you can think in terms of pre-recording for your students is really, really important because they can pause you. They can even have sometimes subtitles. They can rewind. Um, they can go back and watch it again. Mm -hmm. So opportunities for kids to have multiple meaningful encounter with the material with you and so forth. So thank you so much. Lots of, lots of great ideas. So here are a couple of them that I'd like to share with you. I'm gonna now take you to Idaho. Very interesting what Idaho did. They partnered up with the um, uh, local state PBS station and they were teaching lessons every day of the core curriculum at different times of the day. And uh, somewhere I'm gonna share the link with you. I think I already put it on the Padlet that you're gonna to go to. So here you can actually watch co-teachers co-teaching on public television in Idaho. And I was quite impressed because these are the, uh, this is the team, Jamie and Beth, that I've been supporting for three years, visiting them. And all of a sudden seeing them on public television was truly affirming. So here are two ways that the two teachers, one created a completed paragraph sample with uh, color-coded sections and the other one created the um, uh, sentence frames for comparing the Basque and Chinese immigrants going to Idaho. Yes, go figure. It's a very, very interesting place. And here is again Beth and Jamie co-teaching a math lesson on public television and they even uh, recruited Mr. Hogg that's Jamie's husband, to co-teach and co-develop instructional materials as they are teaching about um, area and perimeter for a garden that is a real authentic example of how Mrs. Hogg and Mr. Hogg are creating a garden in their backyard. So it's quite, quite um, adorable. Yes, very cute. So continued pro uh, use of what they've already used before. This particular school district is a thinking map school district. Every child, every teacher, every content area, think, thinking maps is the way to organize thinking. So now they do that on public television. As you could see, I was watching 30 minute segments, halfway through the lesson, multiple times through the lesson. There are these familiar tools presented to the children as the two teachers explain. And uh, moving on to the next collaborative practice, is collaborative assessment and moving on to the next state. Now I'm gonna take you to Kentucky. So Irina and Michelle are um, in a WIDA state. So they use WIDA assessment tools and they translated some of those WIDA levels of proficiencies as well as access data, which is like our NISA SLED data from 2019, 2020 into data charts and Google documents, uh, Google Forms so that teachers that they work with could have a better, faster access to uh, information about their students. And back to Long Island, a big shout out to Erin and Stacy in West Hempstead, where even it might not have been um, originally designed as a co-assessment, but I certainly see that co-assessment is uh, happening everywhere. So if it's a path, Padlet where she modeled what if poems and all of their students in this particular class, fourth graders write all of their what if poems. Now we have an opportunity to have some formative assessment going on in a collaborative fashion. So let's move on and uh, jot down a few ideas about whether or not you've engaged in any parts of this collaborative instructional cycle of co-planning, co-teaching, co-assessing and reflection. And I said co-instruction here because it might have been asynchronous. It might not have been the way as I showed you all of them. Thank you, Miss G. Um, don't know who you are based on your initial, but I love that your answer just popped right in that you are doing all of it. And again, 
the expectation is that we adjust to this new situation. And again, don't feel spotlighted if you feel you have not gotten to all of this yet, mm -hmm. but it's a really critical part of re-examining and revisiting our original intention with the integrated model of instruction in New York. How can we make sure that we implement this with fidelity? And thank you so much for your uh, comfort level and honesty. And it's perfectly fine if you have not done it, all of it yet. Andrea, okay. yes. let, let me know too, we didn't launch your poll earlier. So let me know too, if you would like, maybe at this time, that would be a good, a good time for people to indicate how they are collaborating or Lovely. how they are, the type of role they're serving. So let me know if you'd like to launch that poll. Yes, to that, perfect. That. Okay. Thank you so much. What a wonderful co-presenter I have, co-facilitator. <laughs> Is the yes. poll visible? It's visible, visible to me and somebody's answering. Okay, all right. Yes, and we're very interested about that other. Kelly and I put this together while you were in the waiting room. And uh, we certainly recognize that you might not fit into all of these categories. So we indicated other as the final choice. And if it is other for you, if you could just quickly clarify for us, what do you do that's connected to this topic? I know that probably uh, there are um, college professors here. Some people are saying that they do not see the poll, but we have 91 people responded. So unfortunately, if you do not see it, it might be something in your system, not in the Zoom setup, because now we have over 100 people who responded. So we apologize. We're basically asking you if you co-teach with an ENL teacher, classroom teacher, secondary content, if you coach co-teachers, if you supervise them, if you're new and you're just here to learn or other. So those of you who did not, Carissa, thank you for that. Uh, suggestion that check behind the Zoom meet window. Maybe mm -hmm. it just popped up. And thank you for those of you who come and learn, even if it's not necessarily related directly to your context. Um, yes, a teaching assistant, self-contained autism class, bilingual classes, and um, AIS math teacher uh, as an other TA. Yes, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. So Kelly, maybe we could end the a poll so that we could yes, see. Yes, I will end up. the poll and share the results. Are the results visible? I can see them. We just get, yes, somebody's saying yes, yes. So we are okay. good. Ooh, look at that. The largest group are co-teachers with secondary content teachers. That's really, really exciting to hear. Mm. Usually we have a much larger elementary turnout, right, Kelly? Would you yes, say that? Yes, absolutely. So this mm -hmm. is great. Thank you. So let's continue. And um, is the poll gone now? Nobody can, it's not covering up the screen, right? It should be gone, yes. It should be gone. So this is what co-teaching cool used to look like. And as you could see from Idaho, to Illinois, to New York State, all over the place where I have traveled and took pictures of um, really caring, supportive co-teachers. All of this now is pretty much gone. Yes, Erika, as you said, and all the collaboration is happening virtually. But even before, if you could think about how the neat little circle, circular diagram I gave you has been challenged that co-teaching never really looked that simple. This is what it actually looks like according to the Ready, Set, Co-Teach team in North Carolina, yet another team that I've worked with for about four years. And I would agree that COVID-19, these were all the many, many responsibilities and opportunities to collaborate that we engaged in. By the way, you are going to get a copy of this PowerPoint. It is going to be on the uh, Padlet. So, and today, what does it look like today? I've seen these virtual classrooms popping up, a lot of them from West Hempstead uh, Union Tree School District, but elsewhere as well. Really, really wonderful ways of creating a virtual space for collaboration. I've also seen uh, from Long Beach ways to use Zoom and other tools for synchronous co-teaching as well as asynchronous co-teaching or different groups. Co-teaching in small group reading lessons, this is actually still synchronous, but breaking up into smaller groups as the teachers divide and conquer. 
And I'm going to take you back to Idaho for a moment. And these will be also YouTube lessons that you could watch if you are really interested how Shannon and Molly Jo taught a science lesson. As you could see, one is using manipulatives. The other one is using the thinking map. And sometimes both of their faces are shown as they explain something. And then other times one is talking and the other one is drawing and then vice versa. So I was very, very impressed to see that the exact same co-teaching practices that you would be using in the physical classroom, they just simply translated into the online setting. And finally, joint professional learning as the final way of engaging in collaboration. We're back in Long Beach now. A shout out to Brianna and Ashley as they co-develop and co-facilitate professional learning. And another shout out to Cheryl Goffman from Rice City Schools, who developed an entire system of support by hiring an ICT coach, who is the integrated co-teaching coach, who took on very different roles after COVID-19, focusing mainly on setting up teacher teams working in Google Classrooms. All right, so now which example stood out for you of all the ones that I gave you? Just type it into the chat room. The Padlet has already been typed in, so Kelly, if you could type in the uh, Padlet again, the Padlet link, because we're heading that way very soon. So thank you for sharing what stood out for you, which of these maybe caught your attention. And I know that this is super fast. We could spend the entire day just exploring each of these practices, but um, Eastern Suffolk Boses asked me to set up one hour webinar. So it's gonna be a little bit fast. And our time is just about time for us to go into the breakout rooms. So let me explain again what's gonna happen. Some of you say you don't know how to use a Padlet. It is very intuitive. So there are two things that you're gonna do in the next 10, 12 minutes or so. So in a moment, I think, Kelly, I'm going to need you to make me host. Are you there? I am here. I'm Good. just sharing the so, Padlet link again, and yes, I am wonderful. going to, I am going to uh, make you the host now. Okay. So what's gonna happen is in the meantime, you could click on before I put you in breakout rooms. This is just, you know, trial and error. If you've never done this before, let's just try it. I've been practicing it for a whole week with nine different <laughs> groups. So I, I trust me, it's gonna work. Not for everybody, but we'll go with the flow. So go on that Padlet link, that's step one. That way you have that in the background or minimize the Zoom for now because we're gonna get out of Zoom in a moment or just minimize it, don't, don't turn it off but go on Padlet, so we're going to be multitasking, two screens, two split screens. In a moment, I think I am, hmm, I cannot see, uh, Kelly, I have to ask you to take the host back because I, oh, break, breakout rooms, here we go. Okay. I was just looking for breakout rooms. I am going to assign you into 14 rooms. So in a moment, automatically, you're going to get an invitation to join a room. There will be 10, 11 participants. Please accept that and see what the magic that Zoom is going to do. They're going to put you in a room. And then based on your room number, if you go on Padlet, you will have a task to complete. Okay, so let's try it out. Here we go. Fingers crossed. That took place. So let me share my screen again for a moment because somebody asked to teach you how to do this breakout room setup. And uh, here is my PowerPoint. So I quickly inserted this slide, which I did not show you. So you remember this was the direction that the breakout rooms will be set up automatically. I chose um, seven topics that I pre prepared ahead of time. I created a Padlet ahead of time. So it was a structured conversation with choices, which is really important because some people are done fast, some um, just maybe even don't even wanna stay in that conversation and wanna go for the resources. So I created that kind of um, choice board for you. And then this is what I did. Actually, this is what I failed to mention to you that 
in the classroom, I would also have breakout room rules of engagement and explain exactly that little uh, box on the top how a joint planning topic will be explored if you are in rooms one and two. Uh, number two, the next, second topic will be explored in rooms three and four and so forth. So structure it even further and then reminding everybody about how to, and the, and the break time is not exactly correct here on this. So um, that I just quickly put this together for you to see that this is one way you could set up breakout rooms, you could establish rules of engagement, you could assign a group facilitator, um, and even guide your uh, breakout participants. That post oh, I think someone is, mic is on. So yes, yeah, so if we could all just make sure we're muted, just we're getting a little bit of feedback. And Andrea, I noticed that there were some questions just about, you know, people really loved the breakout rooms and having that option. So there were some questions about how you set them up and it does not need to be set up while you are creating your, your Zoom link. This is something that as the host, once you're in your Zoom meeting, you can just go to your control panel and, um, and initiate the breakout rooms. Yes, so what it is that you have to go under more and you have to be the host. You remember when Kelly and I were going back and forth that I cannot be a co-host. So this is the tricky part about co-teaching is only the host can set up the breakout rooms and Kelly as co-host was actually assigned to a room. And I was able, as a host, I was able to go from room to room. So my um, screen just kept zooming in and out and and I went from one room to the other. I left, it gave me the option, do you wanna leave the room? And it immediately brought me back to the main room. So it is called breakout rooms as one of your choices. And I wanted to um, also answer your questions and wrap up, but of course we could certainly talk more about the breakout rooms and how to do this. But finally, when we think about collaboration and co-teaching, we might not be doing any of these moves, but there are some critical um, educational or pedagogical moves around co-teaching. So why are we doing this and why are we struggling to do this even in a virtual learning environment? Well, first of all, we want to make sure that we're not uh, continuing or ev even um, aggravating student segregation. We also want to make sure that through co-teaching and collaboration, we could truly focus on students' individual needs. We have to continue to integrate content and language. We have to honor a teacher collaboration and the phases of um, the collaborative instructional cycle. And not because it's a top-down mandate, but because it's the job is so difficult and so complex. We have to expect that we're gonna work together, even if you did not do a lot of collaboration. Now, more than ever, collaboration is a must. So I'd like to ask you to add to your chat, in what way, are you making some uh, commitment to collaboration moving forward? And what co-teaching or collaborative moves can you commit to and why? Whatever is gonna happen in the fall, hybrid, online, back into the classroom, we really can go back to that isolated way of my kids, my curriculum. Yeah, so Katie, thank you so much for getting us started. Setting aside time, but better yet, it has to be built into your schedule by administrators. Weekly meetings are very important. Going beyond expectations, yes, yeah. Making planning, oh, there you go. Making planning a priority, co-planning, collaborative planning, Zoom, constant communication. Yes, so even in a virtual daily uh, work plan, I've seen a lot of schools who recreated a teacher schedule in which a nice chunk of time was put in every single day to even um, track down students, communicate with parents, communicate with um, peers, developing next day's lessons. So the active on the Zoom or in the Google Classroom type of face-to-face -face interaction was limited. You were no longer necessarily in the classroom that much time. There was a lot of asynchronous teaching as well. So thank you for sharing all of these ideas. So I'd like to move on to Q&A now. I think we have um, about five or six minutes left before we wrap up this session.
and I really appreciate all of your active participation. I'm going to stop sharing the PowerPoint and I'd like to go back to the Padlet and share that with you so that you could see the Padlet that you were working on a moment ago. Now, I certainly recognize that 10 minutes that I gave you was not necessarily enough. Some groups have not posted, other groups have posted a lot. So again, if I could give you some tips about it, um, as you noticed, I had seven breakout rooms, uh, 14 breakout rooms with seven tasks. The idea behind that was that at least each topic will be addressed by somebody. Now, there are lots of uh, anonymous and single answers as well. Again, because the time was so short, I didn't give you additional guidance, such as you could simply respond. Um, the, group, the group leader can respond, and you could just say breakout room three, and one person could be typing, one person could be facilitating the conversation, or you could decide that everybody's going to be typing and adding their ideas. On the Padlet, um, the way I like to do it is I always offer choices. So it's like a choice board. It is not going to disappear after this workshop. Just the opposite. I'm going to keep it open. I will upload my PowerPoint here. So when you come back, if you hold on to this link, Arburn1, so it's padlet.com slash aonixfile slash Arburn1, then you can watch these webinars and other videos that I uploaded here as well as look at additional resources and articles, many, many. And then I wanted to really give you a lot today. So I designed a Padlet within a Padlet. So here's a Padlet link to another Padlet. And this is organized differently. This was not an interactive Padlet. This Padlet is to store resources, just about everything I wanted to share with you about collaboration and co-teaching on a single virtual uh, bulletin board. And I designed this when Maria Dove and I did a webinar uh, through Molloy a few days, a, a couple of weeks ago. And you might have been part of that. We had over 700 people who signed up for that webinar. So if you've already attended that one, some of the things I shared with you, you might have heard before, but this is a way for you to get even more resources at your fingertips. And then finally, back to the Arburn one. If you have any other questions, please post them here or in the chat box, or simply raise your hand and Kelly and I will try to monitor. What is the link for the Molloy one? The Molloy one is hyperlinked within the Arburn one, but if you wanted to go straight to the Molloy one, there is the link. I don't know if you could see it, padlet.com slash, you know what, why don't we just copy it? Yeah, can you throw that right into the chat? Right That'd into the great. chat box. Yeah, there it is. And I just wanted to point out too that you noted on the, on the Padlet that the slides from today's presentation will be shared here as well, because I know yeah. a lot of people were asking about that. In addition, yes. the recorded session from today will be available on the um, Long Island Arbor YouTube channel. So I have included that link within the chat. And we could put it here as well. Mm -hmm. so and we people had also asked if you could share the templates. So maybe the, the templates okay. can be added to the Padlet as well. Yes, absolutely. And those of you who are new to tab a Padlet, uh, it looks like this. You could see add a column. I'm going to call this templates. Save. And then I will start typing up here. Upload. Um, looks like this. Pick a file. I already have either on my computer or right here. Previously used templates. Here is one. I have lots of templates here that I can just pick for. Oh, right here is Kelly's. This was the digitally completed one and write it, it right. It's right there. So Kelly and Erica designed this. So it's very, very user friendly. Padlet is really fabulous. And then I say, okay, here's another Padlet for you. Pick a file that's already on my computer or in this, in the shortcut part. And so, and I can just upload another uh, template for you. 
um, here is the blank one. Okay, and I can name it. So it literally, once you get more comfortable with this tool, you could design these padlets very, very fast. And they have two major, um, oops, okay. I don't know what happened, but oh. now we're looking at- It looks as though you maybe clicked on our YouTube channel. <laughs> I did click on your YouTube channel. So actually that's a really good way to end that the recording is going to be here. And if there are any questions that you felt that you did not get an answer to, you could do two things. You could come to more of my workshops I'm going to be doing, I think about a total of six. Yes. Thank so you. thank you for bringing that up. I was going to mention that this is not the only day you will be with us because people are saying this was too short. They want more time with you. So okay. we are bringing you back starting okay. tomorrow. You'll be back tomorrow and um, a few days next week as well. Um, so if you have not already registered, please return to my learning plan and find those in our catalog and register. Registration is still open for all of those sessions. If you're unable to attend anything, everything will be recorded and added to our YouTube channel. And we also really, um, we really rely on your feedback regarding these sessions. So when you return to my learning plan, also please go back to today's session and complete the evaluation so that we have that, that feedback from you. So if there's anything else that you're looking for or anything else you wanted to share with us, we have that information. And, and, and I wanted to share with you that if you do come back, it's going to be easier and easier because I'm using exactly the same structure, the mm -hmm. consistency. So you're always going to have a Zoom session that I'm going to be leading, then you're going to do the breakout. So by the end of June, you're going to be very, very proficient using a Padlet, always the same thing, Padlet, breakout room, and back together. Which is exactly oh. what we do with our students, right? Exactly. We, we create a structure, place and create a structure, just, mm -hmm. create a routine so that it's not every time. I mean, I could jazz it up and each time throw in mm -hmm. a different version, but the time is so short. We only have um, one hour, just like in the classroom. So let's mm -hmm. maximize it. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing many of you tomorrow and next week and beyond. And, and stay healthy, stay well, take good care of yourselves. Thank you. And you thank too, Andrea. you. Andrea, thank, thank you. you so, so much for being here with us today. And to all of our participants too, thank you for your engagement and interaction. And hopefully we'll see all of you back here again tomorrow, same time. Thank you, Kelly. Thank, thank you. Thank you.